Hello, and welcome to Did You Know Gaming Extra. Today, we're looking at commemorations within games. While people's lives may end, the impact and effect that they have had on others remains behind. This is why many creators in art and media will look to immortalize those who are important to them, commonly seen in books, films, and even in the world of video games. Sega is known for taking an unashamed approach to the hacking community, and in many ways almost actively encourage it. Sonic Mania was no exception, being co-designed by a community of fan creators, including hackers known for their work on Sonic fan games such as Christian Whitehead and Stella and even with music composed by popular Sonic Remix artist T. Lopes. It was only natural that a tribute would be included in Sonic Mania to Polygon Jim, a member of the Sonic hacking community who sadly died in a car crash in 2013. Heavy Rider, one of the hard-boiled heavy bosses that Sonic has to face, rides a motobug named Jimmy. This is a reference to Polygon Jim's well-known hack of Sonic 1, Motobug the Badnik, in which he replaced Sonic with a motobug who has the ability to jump by extending his wheel, the same movement that Jimmy is capable of in Sonic Mania. After the passing of influential gamer and fourth president of Nintendo, Satoru Iwata, on June 11, 2015, tributes to the icon poured out from all over the world. Nintendo included a number of tributes to Iwata in their games soon after, and even included a small easter egg in the Nintendo Switch, which references his memorable signature move seen during Nintendo Direct broadcasts. Before being patched out in firmware version 4.0.0, when the console's date was set to June 11th, if the player performed the gesture using the console's Joy-Con controllers, the system would launch a hidden copy of one of the first titles Iwata had helped program, the NES title, Golf. The direct move was also referenced in Nintendo's now defunct social app, Miitomo. When entering the word direct, the player's Mii would act out said pose. Iwata was demonstrably excited during Star Fox Zero's production, even taking part in Star Fox Zero's 2015 E3 presentation, appearing as a puppet along with Star Fox and his team. Moved by this and all of his amazing work, the development team included a touching tribute to Iwata during the game's end credits with the line, This game is dedicated to our wingman who fell in battle. He is also referenced in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon. If the player enters the Game Freak building and is holding a Pokemon from the 3DS Virtual Console, an NPC will talk about Satoru Iwata's involvement with Nintendo and Pokemon Gold and Silver. When we were having trouble fitting all the data in for gold and silver, and we were really in a pinch, this amazing guy came along and made a program for us that solved all our problems. He went on to become the amazing president of a real big company soon after that, too. Michael Mamoril, an NPC found in Borderlands 2, is based on a huge fan of the game who tragically died during his fight with cancer at the age of 22. Upon his passing, his friend Carlos wrote to Gearbox, the game's developer, asking them to do a eulogy using the voice of the fan-favorite character, Claptrap. Gearbox not only fulfilled his request, but also added Michael as a character in Borderlands 2, so he could live on forever in the Borderlands. The character has various possible spawn points in Sanctuary, and there is a chance he will give the player high-quality loot based upon the player's current level. The Tribute to a Vault Hunter achievement triggers upon finding him. Borderlands 2 wasn't the only game to pay tribute by creating an NPC. A fan of Fallout 4, Nuge47, or Andy, explained in a Reddit post how he used the game to help him with the grief of losing his dad. When the Automatron DLC was released, he made a bipedal sentry bot with hammer saws, naming it Greg after his father. This was because his father had a similar build to the robot and woodwork was a hobby of his. This made it possible for him to bond with his dad as he played Fallout 4. However, his brother Evan, who was also a fan of Fallout 4, was rushed to the intensive care unit and unfortunately passed away because of complications with his diabetes. Upon hearing this information, Bethesda sent the Redditor a care package that consisted of bobbleheads, a vinyl, a shirt, and more Fallout 4 merchandise. They also created an NPC of Evan in the Nuka World DLC. The character lives on the south side of the map in a trailer and offers the player a Nuka Love recipe, as well as the option of taking anything else in the trailer that they want. Even taking items that are listed as stealing will not provoke Evan to become hostile or change his dialogue. According to Andy, his good-natured character is reflective of his real-life brother, who would give you the shirt off of his back to help those in need. And now it's time for this episode's random piece of trivia. Today we're keeping it light and brief, looking at Yoshi's Woolly World. Revealed in an interview with Edge, 
The team spent time knitting the game's characters to essentially create concept art and get a better understanding of the game's visual style. Executive producer Etsunobu Ebisu stated, Actually making real items using wool to test our representations in the game was obviously necessary, but it took a huge amount of time. We made these while we were establishing which direction to go with for the graphics, for example. That's all for today, but did you know that Digino Gaming Extra is partially funded through Patreon? If you'd like to help support the show and help us provide you with more trivia and information on games, why not take a look in the description below? Welcome, stranger. You found yourself in a strange land. A land marred with the presence of those who have come before you. Chad Barnin and Trevor Wooten, Mr. Spectre and Malcavio. They were not the first, certainly not the last. Before them came Robert Cox and Vetus Farnas. After was Hector I. Murillo and Corey Nelson. Even an effing monkey and Ethan Ryback passed through these twisted aisles. In the beginning came the three master gamers, and next to come is the destined one. The one who will solve this strange puzzle. His name shall be Killian from the Block. He will bring freedom to Karen Chowdhury. And the trio of D, Dean Evanger Jr., Dave P., and the mighty Devin Sloan. They will finally meet the creator, ya boy, Beowulf. If you enjoyed this episode of Digino Gaming Extra, be sure to give the video a like and maybe, maybe consider subscribing. That way you'll see all of our videos as they are released in the future. Don't forget to click the little bell as well. That way you'll have more of a chance of seeing them when they're posted in the future. More of a chance, not a definite chance, of course, YouTube.